the Gen Z led movement will fracture and lose its power if it embraces a leader without proper vetting. I'm saying this answering a question that one of my subscribers had asked to actually evaluate on uh, the so-called leader of Gen Z, Morara Kebaso. Now, maybe to give you a little bit overview of how Morara Kebaso came into uh, Olivion is that during the protest to which uh, the Gen Z led, uh, the protest actually which had led to even the protest to the storming of parliament, we have had v various people uh, really uh, raising different uh, opinions of whether Gen Z should have a leader or not. And Morara came into uh, being known because he has been mimicking Dr. William Samuel Ruto, and also he has been very, very critical in exposing fake projects that were launched by the president and other leaders. Then this were in love with him, coupled with his charisma, the way he speaks, and also uh, the fact that he was exposing the fake project. And that alone has made some people to believe that now that is who should be their leader. Because even as he is speaking here, he has declared himself as the president of the Gen Z. Now, in this uh, video, I want actually to give the bigger picture perspective of what I think about Morara Kebaso and leadership in gen to, uh, about Gen Zs in general. But before we start looking at this critically, let me request all those who are new to our channel to take one second and hit that subscribe button so that any moment we release this kind of video, YouTube will always notify. You remember, here we always give you the bigger picture perspective of what is happening in our society so that you can be able to understand the society better. Now, I, I have shared how Morara Kebaso actually came into being known. Now, this way he has been known or the way he has risen to the ranks is that the way a leader should be evaluated. The answer could be yes or no depending on which angle you are looking for. But from the angle that I'm looking for here, I think, first of all, when Gen Z's were leaderless, I think they were a formidable force more than they are today. Because even the point uh, when they were leaderless, we saw that the government was trying very hard to impose some leaders on them so that they could use those leaders either to infiltrate Gen Z's, reduce their power, or just uh, do it, just to make them complacent, okay? But they were not uh, able to really succeed. For that reason, I think leadership in Gen Z could serve two purposes or could achieve two purposes. One, it could either make them actually be hard, that is through this one leader, or two, it could dilute the effect of the Gen Z movement and lead to the Gen Z movement death. This two uh, theories or this two way of uh, thinking is if the leader is good enough, if the leader is one who is focused on the cause and is a true leader, then he will not be able to be compromised by the system and he will fight for Gen Z's the latter even if it is with his or her life. But if we find a complacent leader, a leader who is there for his or her personal interest, then believe me, he will sell you with 30 pieces of silver and we are, uh, as Gen Z's, you'll be going nowhere apart from uh, your movement actually uh, falling. So, as I've said, that the, those are the two uh, likely outcomes of when a uh, Gen Z's uh, decide to select a leader. And that's why I believe the leader to be selected has actually to be a leader who is on the course, eh? true to the course. You have to select the leader based on how true he is or she to the course, but not how he is explaining himself, not how he is speaking, not how he is putting uh, the perception he has created about himself or herself. We have to select a leader based on the cause and to identify if indeed he or she is aligned with the cause, look at the track record of that leader, look at his actions, look at his moves. Is there anything suspicious? If so, then you have to sit down and reflect. If there is nothing suspicious, then maybe you may continue giving him trust for quite some time. And I think so far, I'm not very sure if Morara has passed 
all those tests because uh, we are seeing uh, different people having different perspective. In fact, I think it was yesterday where he tweeted something about Gashagwa, where he, he appeared like he was protecting Gashagwa. So I don't understand why he is protecting Gashagwa, but he knows uh, himself. I think now, uh, having said that, uh, Gen Z is actually need to approach to use a strategy of wait and see. Wait and see in the sense that Yes, we have many leaders. We have many people who express themselves well. We have many people who think they can actually lead the Gen Z movement. Okay? Uh, but not all of them can do it better. Or not all of them are really true to the cause. So if we wait and see how they'll be uh, conducting themselves, then I think uh, that will be a good strategy to really uh, evaluate a leader or just a, a person who is chasing cloud. And uh, we have to allow or give an opportunity for several Gen Z's to rise, okay? We don't have to kill others who are rising that we have declared one a leader. No, I don't think that is the way to go. We have to allow others to rise. Then within the pool of these many who will have risen, we will be able to sample or to identify out one individual who, based on the character, traits, track records, actions, and everything, we will say that indeed... This is the leader. But at the, this particular time, I think it is too early. We cannot jump from frying pan uh, to direct fire. And um, uh, this ability or this knowledge or analytical skills uh, that will enable us actually to identify or that will enable Gen Z to identify a good leader cannot be gotten in a vacuum. It will only be found if the Gen Zs will and will only sit down and gather information about politics, okay? Which I, I simply refer to as um, gaining political knowledge, how governance works, leadership, uh, interest. So that is something that will be gotten intentional. You cannot tell me that you will understand the political dynamics uh, just without being intentional about it. So that you can be able to make an informed decision. You know, sometimes people make decisions based on emotions, not logical reasoning. If you make um, real, uh, decisions based on emotions, you are very likely to make a poor decision. And uh, logical decisions always have to be coupled with some knowledge. So it is time for the Gen Z's to gather knowledge about uh, Good leadership, good politics, and indeed uh, characteristics of a person who can actually uh, lead uh, the movement. And that's why I, I end this uh, analysis by saying that um, Gen Z's need to stay unified, okay? Unity is strength, okay? And uh, it is one of the reasons why uh, the government and the system was strengthened about them. They should not allow an individual who has his or her own personal interest to come and fracture the movement. Because if an individual who has his own personal interest comes, he can be bought. If he's bought, the movement will fracture and it will go nowhere. Or there will be some people who will feel like they are being left out. So they will not actually put the effort that they were putting before. That will also fracture the movement. So let us remain unified and unified by the cause, not uh, by an individual. Secondly, they need also to be very cautious. Eh? Cautious in the sense that uh, there will be very leader, many leaders who will present themselves. Eh? But you need to be very cautious to thoroughly evaluate them and see indeed if any person who is presenting himself or, or herself as a leader actually warrants to be in that uh, position. Also focus on the actions of the people who are uh, projecting themselves as leaders. Don't look at them, their words. A person can speak anything, but action and consistency is what matters. But that analytical skills to uh, gain that will only come through uh, reading. Eh? Let me be very clear. Reading. You have to read. If you cannot read, maybe you can even just watch the history of um, leaders, good leaders, how they were historically, how they ended up, how they rose. So you can, you can get the picture of a uh, rough, rough picture of how to get a good leader and how a good leader uh, should actually conduct themselves, okay? Lastly, uh, how to think long term. These hasty decisions, uh, decisions of waking up and making a decisions will lead Gen Z nowhere. You have to think long term. Think about 50 years from now. If you select this kind of person, what system have we put in place to ensure that indeed it does not betray our cause? 
okay so you have to think from a bigger picture perspective and it will be able to sell will be able to select a good leader having said that i think uh, i will say uh, i will emphasize uh, that i do not fully say that now kebaso morara is the leader no at this particular time no we need to uh, to evaluate uh, him and evaluate other leaders to see indeed if they fit uh, to be in that a position of leadership because this is about the country it's not about an individual and it's not about a family okay i don't know what you think about this please feel free to share with me your opinion at the comment box until we meet again bye bye <music>